predicting artificial intelligence will replace millions of jobs and that may become a reality very soon for workers at one major tech company. Investor and entrepreneur Mark Cuban says that he saw this coming four years ago when he predicted AI would shrink demand for computer science degrees. So let's bring in Keith Kroc, former uh, Undersecretary of State and Chairman of the Kroc Institute for Tech Diplomacy at Purdue University. Thanks uh, for giving us a little bit of a time on your Saturday. We really appreciate it. Well, l let's start with this rather startling news. This is out of IBM. That's the company we're talking about. This company CEO estimating that 7,800 jobs at the company could actually be done in, or rather done, by artificial intelligence. The result, the impact here, an anticipated pause in hiring for jobs. So we're not talking about a massive layout at the, this point in time. This was reported by Bloomberg. Uh, but this is just one company. But it offers a little bit of confirmation about what some have predicted, like Goldman Sachs, that AI perhaps could cause pretty serious disruption really in the global economy. What, what do you think about this case with IBM and the grander rep possible repercussions? Well, Molly, it's certainly going to change the way uh, people do their jobs. And AI, like any other technological paradigm shift, is going to be benefit humanity in the long run in terms of productivity, uh, quality of life, uh, human progress. But the, you know, the thing that makes this paradigm shift different than, you know, paradigm shift in the past, whether they were robotics, whether they were the Internet, cloud computing uh, or mobile, is that it's coming on really, really fast. And so one of the key things is to be able to uh, train that workforce. And when Cuban talks about uh, how it's gonna affect computer scientists, I mean, look at it as a new uh, form of computer language, just like it went from uh, Fortran to object-oriented program. It really increases the productivity. You know, there's this phrase tossed about as an insult, a lack of sympathy for those that are losing jobs that they should, quote, learn to code. But in truth, these coding tech jobs, you know, they've been presented as needed, as solid employment, you know, white collar, high paying. You know, is this generation of people that are essentially training for coding jobs or compute or jobs in computer science, are they training for for jobs that maybe won't exist for much longer? Well, look, I think that uh, people who are training for that are, are, are training how to learn how to think illogically. Hmm. You know, when I look back, when I went to uh, uh, engineering at Purdue, uh, a lot of the things that we learned back then are now obsolete. If you look at what hap had happened in electrical engineering or even mechanical engineering, all those kind of things. So these are smart people. It's going it, 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 to the way that they, they're going to program is going to be different. And so this whole transition, you know, the big question here is that technology can be used for good or it can be used for evil purposes. And we have to ensure that technology advances freedom. Absolutely. And we, the train has left the station and you're either on the train or on, on the tracks. You're not going to see regimes like Russia or China slow down. And you can bet if we do nothing that uh, China is going to develop it irresponsibly. Yeah, you mentioned uh, kind of this being a good or evil type of fight. Some of the headlines that AI grabs are about cloning the voices of, of artists and musicians and creating uh, images, likenesses of people that could look real and now writing poetry. And, you know, is AI kind of stepping into the human mind and heart? And is there a concern about, you know, replacing even some of our creative artists? Well, I, I think one thing's for sure. I don't think the human mind or, or certainly the human heart can be replaced. But I think it, I think it can uh, aid the productivity of, of poets, writers, all those kind of things. But it's just, I mean, what it does is it spits out basically what it has absorbed and then what it has learned, uh, you know, from, from what it's absorbed. So I don't think anything is going to replace that. I think it's going to be, in the long run, it's going to be a tremendous tool. And we just have to make sure that it's done responsibly. Absolutely. The fight for good, evil, and the human heart. I had no idea this was going to go there. But thank you very much.